Today, we will talk about how to get an edge on the competition by aligning your email marketing efforts to unique buyer personas to increase sales and create strong, lifelong customer relationships. I'm Julie from Sleeknote, and in this video, I'll tell you why your emails aren't generating the results you were expecting. Before I get started, I'm just going to give you three seconds to subscribe so you'll get an update next time we have email marketing goodies ready for you. Great. Imagine this, you're in front of your computer trying to write an awesome piece of content for your audience, but you're having a hard time finding the right angle. Sounds familiar? This is a common problem among marketers. They don't know who they're writing for, meaning they haven't considered the buyer personas. You might know that you're writing for fellow marketers or tech savvy entrepreneurs, but do you really know who they are and what they need? Having a profound understanding of your target audience is critical if you want to write better content, develop better products, and not to forget, write effective email marketing campaigns. If you're craving more inspiration on email marketing campaigns, we've created this bundle, like a bundle, but more fun, packed with our favorite email marketing campaigns to inspire your own. Click here. Okay, so let's dive in. Before you can write awesome emails, you need to find and create your buyer personas. If you've already defined your buyer personas, don't leave just yet. I'm sure you'll learn a thing or two you hadn't already thought of. There are two types of data you should be looking at when creating your buyer personas. They are demographic data and psychographic data. Let's take a closer look at each one. Okay, so demographic data is relatively easy to find because the information is easily accessible and can be collected without communicating with your audience. This data could be age, gender, location, employment status and more. There are many ways to research buyer personas based on demographic data and my favourites are through Google Analytics, customer service and your contact database. You're probably already familiar with Google Analytics, so I won't go into detail explaining where to find all the relevant data. The idea here is to get a quick overview of the basic demographic data of your audience, in this case, your sessions. Here you'll see an overview of your audience's demographics, such as age, gender, and location, which will be the foundation for your buyer personas. Now, I say buyer personas in plural because you'll most likely need to create more than one buyer persona. So create multiple buyer personas that you can target with personalized content rather than target one buyer persona with generic content. Okay, so where else can you find information on your buyer personas? Your customer service department is the answer. Hello, customer service, this is Steve. They're sitting on a true pot of gold when it comes to customer insights. They're the people who talk to your customers every day and learn about their problems and challenges. Ask them what generalizations can be made about your customers through the interaction they have with your team and if there are any recurring trends to be discovered. Next, you should look to your contact database. Your contact database or your contact management system is a great place to discover demographic data about your leads and customers. You might be interested in knowing what type of business they're in or what actions they've taken with your business. Dive into the data you already have on your contacts and search for trends and see if there are any generalizations to be made. You'll be surprised how much you can learn by going through existing data and how you can use this data to create or refine your buyer personas. Okay, so that's how you find demographic data. Now let's move on to psychographic data. Psychographic data can be harder to find, but it also has more value for your business. This type of data allows you to connect with your audience on a deeper level and create content that resonates with them. Psychographic data includes the attitudes, interests and values of your audience. Let's take a look at ways of collecting psychographic data for your buyer personas. First, we have email replies. The era of no reply emails is over or at least should be. You should always encourage your audience to respond to your emails, whether it's through direct questioning or subtle allusion. Many marketers have begun asking these type of questions in their emails to get to know their audience better. You can also ask for feedback when customers churn or when potential customers don't convert into customers. Today's pro tip, getting people to respond to your emails also improves your deliverability and reduces your spam score. That's pretty awesome. 
Okay, so next on the list of psychographic treasure chests is Reddit. Reddit is a killer resource when it comes to gathering consumer insights. You can find information on anything. By searching for keywords related to your product in subreddits, you can see what's the most important to your audience and what they're struggling with. For instance, there's a popular subreddit called r backslash ask women, where women ask each other all kinds of questions from career advice to cleaning tips. I tried searching for cleaning and I found that most of the cleaning posts are requests for cleaning tips and hacks. As an online store selling products or cleaning equipment, this would be a great topic to address in the content you're publishing. If you combine this information with your demographic data, you can create targeted cleaning guides for specific buyer personas based on this data. And lastly, we have Cura. Cura is a rallying of questions. You can find a question and an answer to pretty much anything. Let's say you run an e-commerce store specializing in running equipment. You should use Cura to search for specific topics on running and see what comes up. For instance, if you search for marathon, you'll find that a common question related to this topic is how to prepare for a marathon. If you provide your marathon enthusiastic buyer persona with information on this, they'll be much more likely to convert into repeat customers. When you're collecting psychographic data, you should pay close attention to the exact words people use because you'll need it when you're creating targeted content. Now, let's have a look at how you use this data in practice. Once you've created your buyer personas, based on the data you collected, it's time to customize your email content to these personas. It's no longer enough to let your audience know you understand them and can help them solve their problems. You need to communicate with them in the language they use if you want to connect with them. And by language, I don't mean English, Spanish or Chinese. No, I mean the type of language and the words they use. I'm hip, I, I surf the web, I text, LOL, laugh out loud, OMG, oh my God, WTF, why the face? Dollar Shave Club, for example, differentiate themselves from their competitors by speaking like their customers. No one likes a dirty racer, right? So every aspect of your email from the subject line all the way to the PS needs to be consistent with your brand's voice and how you want to communicate with your specific buyer personas. Another important aspect is to be unique. Now, I know we say this a lot at Sleek Note, but being unique is the best way to stand out in your reader's overcrowded inbox. One of my favorite authors on this subject is Andre Chaperon. Andre writes an email sequence like you would write a TV series like Lost. So he refers to this as soap opera sequence. In every email, he asks big open-ended questions that you don't know the answer to. And by email seven, you'll have 40 unanswered questions opening every email expecting the answers. Sometimes you get them, sometimes you don't. Now with this tactic, you can make your open rates go up for every email you send. Pretty amazing, right? So the key to a successful soap opera sequence is sending one, the right email, to the right person, at the right time. It's all about relevance. So lastly, let's talk images. According to 3M, we process images 60,000 times faster than text. And 93% of consumers consider a visual appearance to be key when making a purchase decision. This information alone should convince most marketers to include images in their email marketing campaigns. But listen up, you can't just include images and expect your conversion rates to skyrocket. If you're using images in your email campaigns, you have to include the right images. Once again, it comes down to relevance. Does your buyer persona respond well to images? And if so, what images? Here's an example from Topo's Designs. They know that one of their buyer personas is an active outdoors person. So by including an image of a product in use and a strong testimonial, they address the pain points or concerns that audience might have about durability and cleaning of the product. If you include images in your email marketing campaigns, make sure they're there for a reason. Don't just add them because they look good. Images are just like words. They need to be relevant and support the story. Otherwise, they shouldn't be there at all. Creating targeted email campaigns for your buyer personas is hard work. But if you're done right, you'll not only increase your bottom line, but also create stronger relationships with your audience. When every email is relevant, 
to the receiver, most of your emails will be opened and clicked, meaning more money in the bank. That was all from me today. Obviously, you're dying to start implementing all of these amazing tips, but before you do anything, hit subscribe right here. You don't want to miss out on even more invaluable hacks, I promise. And if you want to learn more about aligning your email marketing to your buyer personas and see more examples, just click this floating box. See you next time, fellow geeks.